Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on practical uses of cryptographic hash functions. So let's start by defining what a cryptographic hash function is and why is it important. A cryptographic hash function is a cryptographic primitive that is used to provide data integrity and authentication. Cryptographic hash functions are meant to take in a blob of data such as a password, an email, a file, or even an entire hard drive and output a fixed string hash value that uniquely represents the input. Once a piece of data has gone through a cryptographic hash function, there is no expectation and no ability to get the original piece of data back. By design, cryptographic hash functions are non-reversible. So why are cryptographic hash functions important? They're important because they allow us to authenticate ourselves with internet services via passwords. They also give us data integrity, whether a message, a file, or an entire hard drive. This brings us to our first demo. In this demo, I will show you how to use cryptographic hash values to add another layer of defense by automatically detecting unauthorized changes to system critical files that reside on your server or personal computer. So here's how to create a cryptographic hash value. In Linux, the date command displays the current date and time as you would expect. Let's use this information to create a test file so that we can use it in our demo. Let's store the date and time into a file. Let's verify that the file got created properly. Let's verify its contents. Great. Now, let's create a cryptographic hash value of the contents of this file using the SHA-1 function. The SHA-1 function is a cryptographic hash function designed by the NSA and is a U.S. Federal Information Processing Standard. It was published by NIST that's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. More importantly, SHA-1 produces a 160-bit hash value. We are going to use a tool in Linux called SHA-1-SUM that implements the SHA-1 cryptographic hash algorithm. There are many tools that implement SHA-1. Every major operating system has a handful of tools to choose from. For the Windows operating system, a SHA-1 implementation can be found here. The Mac operating system already comes with a pre-installed tool called SHA-SUM. For this Linux demo, the SHA-1 SUM tool expects an argument, so we are going to feed it one argument, the name of the file we created previously. So, this right here is the cryptographic hash value of the content of our file. Now I'm going to demonstrate the impact of changing only one character in the file has on the cryptographic hash value we just computed. So let's change one character in the file. Just one character in the file. Let's rerun the SHA-1 cryptographic hash function against the same file. As you can see, the new cryptographic hash value is different than the old cryptographic hash value as a result of merely changing one character in the file. This is what we'd expect from a good cryptographic hash function. To prove that the cryptographic hash value is content dependent, let me run the cryptographic hash function for SHA-1 again 
without changing any of the content in the file. As you can see, we get the same cryptographic hash value as the previous one because the content of the file has not changed since. So what does all this mean? It means that we can use the SHA-1 or any other standard cryptographic hash function to help us detect changes. To recap, in our original file we produced this cryptographic hash value, then we changed only one character in the file, then we produced a new cryptographic hash value which is currently highlighted. Because the two hash values are different, we can safely conclude that the file has changed even without looking at its contents. Cryptographic hash values help us provide data integrity. Data integrity is very important to the entire communities of network security and cybersecurity. In this context, Data integrity means that the information or data has not been modified by unauthorized entities. For this demo, we are going to concentrate on data integrity of a specific system critical file called .bashrc. However, for your case, the file or files can be any file vital to the successful operation of your server or device. The .bashrc script file sets up the environment and gets executed every time we log in to a Unix-based or Linux computer that has been configured to use bash as the default shell. Let's consider the following scenario. Your .bashrc file is a system critical file that may be a target to an attacker. He or she may want to add their own commands to maliciously open a backdoor, for example, so that they can use this backdoor at will and log into your system with ease. So let's dive into how an attacker would exploit your computer by maliciously modifying a system critical file such as the .bashrc file. For the sake of this demo, this is the victim's screen and next to it is the attacker's screen. This is what the attacker sees and controls. We're about to simulate connecting to a back door, but first I want to show you that the attacker's directory is empty. Specifically, there is no file.txt that we created on the Linux side. In order to set up the back door, we need to find the IP address of the victim's computer. This is the victim's IP address. Let's set up the back door on the Linux side. This is the command that the attacker would maliciously add to your .bashrc file. We are getting ready to connect to the victim's machine. This is the victim's IP address. I am going to zoom out so that you can see both screens simultaneously when the connection is made. And there. As you can see, the connection has been made to the victim's computer. At this point, the attacker has full control over the victim's machine and can do pretty much anything he or she wants. Things like viewing directory listings or viewing the contents of files, creating directories, moving on to the more damaging aspects this attacker could do would be to install rootkits to hide his presence or look at the cryptographic hash values, including the one for root or administrator. Let's terminate the connection with control C. So now the attacker is no longer connected to the victim machine. Remember the directory we created 
while connected to the victim machine? Let me prove to you that that directory is not on the attacker's machine. So in order to defend against this attack vector using cryptographic hash values, we need to Step 1. Create a baseline of all files you want to detect unauthorized changes to. For this example, we will assume that all the files we want to baseline are located in our home directory and their names start with a dot. In a few moments, we will write a bash script to help us automate this task. After creating the baseline of cryptographic hash values, we need to burn them to a non-writable media such as a DVD or a CD-ROM. This will ensure that they can't be changed unless we create a new baseline. I will make a reasonable assumption that the attacker does not have physical access to the DVD drive nor the computer. Step 2. Automate the detection of changes to the baseline files using cryptographic hash functions. Since the baseline SHA-1 cryptographic hash values are stored on a non-writable media and the computer and DVD drive are in a reasonably secure location, we can assume with a high degree of confidence that our baseline cryptographic hash values are in a secure location and unchanged from the time we created the baseline. So basically, this step consists in periodically comparing the current cryptographic hash values on the computer or server or device to those that we have in our baseline. To accomplish this, we can solicit the help of our operating system services that automatically execute scripts periodically. In Linux and Macs, this facility is called cron jobs. In Windows, it's called task scheduler. Step 3. Notify applicable parties when an unauthorized change is detected via whatever method of communication has been established. Could be email, pager, a text message, a phone call. It depends on each case. So let's tackle the task of creating a bash script to help us create a baseline for all the files we want to detect unauthorized changes to. I do realize that polishing our bash scripting skills is a little out of scope. However, I also believe in capitalizing every opportunity to learn. Let's use the last three minutes of this presentation to write a bash script to support step one. Let's start by creating an empty file and giving everybody execution privileges to that file. Now let's kick off an editor to start creating the bash script. The very first two characters in a Unix or Linux script need to be the shebang special marker, the number sign followed by the exclamation sign. These are actually a two-byte magic number which designate the file type, or in our case, an executable shell script. Immediately following the shebang is the path to the program that interprets the commands in the script, or in this case, the bash shell. This line removes the output file generated by this script in a previous run, if any. Since the names of the files that we want to baseline start with a dot, this line selects all items in the current directory that start with a dot. This line filters out anything that is not a file. For example, it filters out directories. This line runs the cryptographic hash function against the file and appends the result to our output file. The next two short lines close previous blocks. 
and the last line displays the contents of our output file that has been constructed by appending to it during the execution of each of the files found. Let's run the newly created script. Here's the output that it generated, also stored in a file. Let me show you the contents of the output file that we generated. To recap, I have showed you in this presentation a practical use for cryptographic hash values generated by cryptographic hash functions. I do believe that it is outside the scope of this presentation to go deeper into implementing steps two and three. Perhaps we can do it in a future presentation. This brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for your attention.